You are listening to episode 28 of the Less Dress, More Fun podcast. This one I'm calling The Quest for Certainty. You are listening to the Less Dress, More Fun podcast. I'm your host, certified coach Lisa Schwaller. Each week, we talk about how you can rise above the stress of modern living so that you can focus your energy on what matters most. All right, let's get started. Well, hello, hello. I bet you knew I would say that, especially if you're a regular listener. Why? Well, because your brain is a master at prediction. I mean, it has to be. Prediction is a great word to describe your brain's most essential survival tool. Ah, before we get started, I want to set the scene, plus give a shout out to a friend. She and I were working together in a coaching session when I observed that her brain seemed to be on a quest for certainty. (laughs) We had a laugh, and she said I should turn that into a podcast episode. So, voila. And then right after, she uh, mentioned one of my favorite movies, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And what was funny is when I uh, we both seemed to think of the same scene in the movie at the same time where the church official was reading off the rules for using the holy hand grenade, and we said the dialogue together. Ah, because both our brains predicted where the conversation was going. Ha ha ha. See what our minds do? So, hereafter, in this the most revered of podcast episodes, we shall pay us respect to our brains. Quest! For certainty, in a most less stress, more fun manner. Whew, seriously, that was one of my favoriteest movies ever, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And that sentence was one of the most challenging to say without tripping over my own tongue. Indeed, let us now proceed with the proceedings. In today's episode... I'm going to be discussing the benefits and challenges of being the owner and operator of a certified certainty-seeking brain, which we all are. I will suggest methods for how you can identify the sneaky ways that your brain's quest for certainty distract you from your goals. What? And then we'll discuss how you can use this cognitive feature to your benefit. Oh, if you spend a lot of time with me, you know I'm a really big fan of not trying to work and overpower our biology because, boy, it has been fine-tuned, and why not just use these features to our benefit? But first, let's look big picture. Uh, Let's look at the benefits and challenges of having a brain that seeks certainty or that makes predictions. This week, as always, whenever possible, I try to link to Amazing articles that give you a little bit more context if you'd like to learn more. And, you know, looking at how these brains work from a scientific perspective. Now, I can't download everything that I learned, but I did summarize into three buckets of benefits. Number one, it makes your brain more efficient. So brains use, what is it, like 20% of our resting calories go to just keeping the brain going. Huge amount of energy expenditure when you look at it from a system perspective. Your brain builds maps, it identifies patterns, and it does this using your previous experiences plus all the stories that it has written about how life works. When an input arrives through one of your senses, your brain will compare it against existing mapping which is so much more efficient than trying to figure it out from scratch every time. A good example here is thinking about driving or walking the final mile to your home. Not only may you have a predictable navigation path, but you may have a predictable mood or thinking pattern. Same, same, day in, day out. Notice this next time you're out driving around, like when you're leaving that first mile or when you're coming back. That not only may you take a similar route, but you may also have similar thought feeling combinations. Like it may, you may have that kind of the same mood. Isn't that interesting? Now, the second benefit is comfort. 
So not only is it efficient, the brain is like, okay, yeah, I know what's going on here. Yep, yep, yep. It's, I'm predicting it's A, B, and C. It's also more comfortable. It's, it, it increases a sense of safety when your brain can predict what's going on. Prediction means predictable, which means all safe on the savanna. No tigers here. Now we can turn our attention to using our dopamine to find food, shelter, sex, and other movement-based activities. The third benefit is what I call crossover. So your brain is a master of making sense of new situations, using brain maps from unrelated topics. That's how you can translate knowledge from one subject area to another. Like if you've, you know, put on pants before, if you know how to put on jeans, you probably know how to put on a snowsuit. One of my favorite examples of this is how they have studied the benefits of kids learning to play a musical instrument and how much of a crossover effect it has on proficiency in math and science. Well, of course, that makes sense when you really kind of slow down your attention to think about it. Learning to play a musical instrument teaches a very complex and elegant way of um, of anticipating what's coming up, turning it into physical movements, recalibrating based on feedback. It's a very complex system, learning to play a musical instrument. And of course, that would cross-pollinate to other new information scenarios like figuring out a scientific or math puzzle. But are there drawbacks to this beautiful cognitive function? Of course. In our modern life, of course, you know, this brain's prediction has its challenges. And here are two. The first one is error, error, whoot, whoot, error, error. <laughs> Our brains sometimes make inaccurate or incomplete calculations. This can be true as we do more knowledge work. We're in a more digital social landscape where the data sets are, shall we say, highly altered by computer algorithms. It's a very, very real thing that what you're seeing, like if you're a Facebook or Twitter user, what you're seeing in your feed is probably different than the person who's sitting across the room for you. Everything has been highly configured and fed to you based on your previous interactions with their servers. So four people can read the same news story and have 12 different opinions because the information they've been provided to write the stories in their brain have likely been um, uh, like self-selected or computer-selected. And this can make us prone to error. So that news story is one example, but our brains will sometimes see something and map it to something that's wrong. I'll give you a perfect example. I can't tell you how many times, it's more than 10, probably more than 20, where I used to run, haha, <laughs> on run on these wooded trails. It was so lovely. I lived in North Carolina. I'd go on these wooded trails or I'd go on the like greenway trails. And I can't tell you how many times I saw what I was sure my brain was like, that's a snake, but it was a stick. <laughs> so that's happened to me a lot it, because the brain just, it, it's, it saw the thing. It knows snakes are around here. There's probably more of them here than there are of you silly humans. And it just took me recognizing, oh, that's a, that's a brain error. That's actually just a stick. That's one drawback. Another drawback is what I would use that word myopia, myopic. And that's a word commonly referred to sight, and that's like the narrowing of your vision. But your brain's quest for certainty means that it's just slicing data to predict what's going on and to have a certain answer. It may completely ignore other inputs. It may see something that comes in your frame of reference, make a decision about it, have a certain story about it, and completely forget the other 92 options. In fact, that's probably like the number one benefit of coaching is that when you get on the phone with me, I listen to the way you're describing the situation. I've never heard this before, and I'm able to detect where you are maybe missing seeing options for interpretation because your brain has decided that this is the, the one and only option. It just decided that it's right. And and it, it's not that you're not being creative or you're not being, you know, uh, 
in integrity with how you're interpreting information. It's just the brain has said, oh, I have an answer to that. Moving on. So helping your brain look at different possible uh, conclusions is just overcoming one of those drawbacks to having a brain that likes to make predictions quickly and decisively. So how does this thinking pattern, your brain's quest for certainty, distract you from your goals or from showing up as the person you want to be? Remember those two drawbacks? The fact that you may have like a brain error, it just inaccurately codes input, or that it misses options by being myopic. When I'm working with people who are on the path to a goal, a lot of times that includes taking a look at how they're managing their time or time management or productivity, which I despise those terms, but that's topic for another podcast. But essentially, that's what people will come with. Oh, I just have too much on my plate. Oh, I don't have time. It takes too much time. And I've become very attuned to hearing this and similar phrases and knowing that that's an area where it's worth pausing and exploring more. In some cases, maybe there is a math problem. Maybe that person is planning more than 24 hours in a day. Maybe it's a, a priority opportunity. Maybe they just need to say no to certain things. And in a lot of cases, it's really, really getting clean and clear and factual about what is happening during the day. We can see some very interesting ways that the brain will distract from being focused on goal. It'll make thought errors. It will forget other options. And, you know, then really slowing down, we can say, oh, that's why you're not hitting the goal. It has nothing to do with your calendar. <laughs> it has nothing to do with time. It has to do with A, B, or C. Isn't that amazing? It's wonderful. Finally, let's look at ways you can use your brain's quest for certainty to your benefit. There are two deceptively simple ideas for channeling your brain's natural desire for certainty. If it wants to predict, put it to good use, I say. Let's use this to our advantage, yes? So the first suggestion is to practice decisive decision-making. Ugh, this is something I talk about a lot in my less stress, more fun world. You want to have less stress in your life? Be a decisive decision maker. You want to have more fun in your life? Live intentionally. You're constantly deciding, even when it feels like you're leaving your options open. And the more decisive you are in your decision making, the less stress is generated by your certainty seeking mind. I did a, a series in the podcast recently on decision making and follow through. It's episodes 13 to 20. You get so much out of going through those episodes and doing that deep dive into making decisions. When you practice decisive decision making, even sometimes kind of overcorrecting with it, of saying, oh, okay, so this morning I'm deciding to record the podcast on the brain's quest for certainty, and I'm deciding that it's going to take me less than 30 minutes. Beautiful. Then my brain isn't like, oh, how long is this going to take? Should I do it today? Should I do it on Tuesday? I don't know. It's kind of blah, 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 blah. It, it's just trying to find a solution. I have decided in advance to give it one. It's decided, brain. No need to, to ponder that. Let's go do something else. Second, create systems everywhere, everywhere in your life that you can. I am an exceptionally process-oriented thinker by nature or by, I, uh, I doubt I was like this at 10 days old. So chances are somewhere in my upbringing, I started to tell the story that I'm very organized and I think ahead. And then I just continued to learn the skills that made that very true over time. So I'm process-oriented as a thinker. And at the same time, I like to have a lot of space in my life. I don't do well with back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back or a lot of I like to have space to think and to have flexibility and spontaneity. So what's my answer to these things that could create conflict for my mind? Systems everywhere. I do chores on certain days every single week. It's on my, I, I use ClickUp for my task management. And 
I know that on Wednesdays, I'm going to do one thing. I know that, you know, every Thursday, I do this task. Every Monday, I do this task. It's just, it's planned. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to wonder. It is just, my brain is certain when those things are going to happen. Same thing as I have a system for mornings. The last minute before I get out of bed, I do a mental rehearsal of what is going to happen in that first five to seven minutes. And then once my feet hit the ground, I just run through the sequence. And I do the same thing with my evening routine. And my brain, for one thing, it, it knows what to expect. It's certain. It doesn't have to think or map. And it reinforces habits. It's a great way to weave in habits that you'd like to develop. So systemizing getting out of bed in the morning, what you do, systemizing that transition from being upright to laying down in bed, that is a perfect opportunity for a system. Systems run my life. It's how I manage time. I participate in social media. It's how I run my business. It's how I work with my clients. There's a system and a process for everything. And this is such a huge benefit. I do this. Because I know that the mind hormones, dopamine, serotonin, norepinephrine, like I want to use what I've learned to my advantage. I want to give a lot of certainty, a lot of serotonin around things that I want very stable and continuous. And then I let the dopamine machine go play. I'm like, hey, dopamine, go on the hunt for creative ideas. Maybe I'll learn some new ways to do things. Maybe I'll get some creative things to teach. And in this manner, my systems feed my brain's quest for certainty as well as its quest for novelty. Ah, we covered a lot of ground today. I want to recap by saying today we talked about the benefits and challenges of having a brain that seeks certainty. The benefits are that it makes your brain more efficient. It helps boost your sense of security, and it's how you can learn things from one thing to the next. And then there's the challenges, that sometimes our brains incorrectly code things, and sometimes our brains will find a solution that maybe is a solution, but it leaves a lot of other options on the table. We talked about how you can find those sneaky ways that your brain may be coding things inaccurately or limiting yourself to a subset of potential options. And then we talked about how you can use your brain's desire for certainty. This cognitive feature is just programmed in. Use it to your benefit by being really decisive in how you make decisions and establishing systems everywhere you can so that you give your brain that certainty, but it's really intentional. It's on purpose. All right, my friends, it's time for Coach Lisa's homework. This week, I have a very ambitious homework assignment for you. Are you ready for this? I know you are. And remember, I post the homework in threads on the Facebook group. So if you're not in there, definitely come join. You can find the homework there. You can interact on the posts if you like. That's a really great way to interact with me directly. Your homework, three parts. The part number one is to write down 10 things you believe are absolutely true about how life works. And don't include scientifically true things like gravity or oxygen being part of the air we breathe. Choose beliefs. What do you believe to be true about how life works? And then just ask yourself if there was a space alien who came in and asked, why do you think that? And then evaluate, like, what would the opposite belief be? I'll just, on the spur of the moment, give one example, which is, you know, I prefer the color green, for example, and be like, oh, well, what would it be like if I said I prefer the color orange? And that's a silly example, but really get into your beliefs and find out what you believe to be true and then see it from the opposite side. Next. The second part of the homework is find three things that are on your to-do list that you have snoozed or rescheduled more than three times. Make a decision about those three things. Either make a decision to get it done and win. Make a decision that you'll reevaluate this in the future or get rid of it. Close the loops in your mind. 
and you'll reduce your stress. And you know what? The third part is just think of one area in your life that would benefit from a system. Pick a place in your life where you want to establish a little routine or a system or offload the thinking to your calendar or something else and ask yourself if you're willing to try an experiment with it for a week. Oh, and by the way, this is just bonus homework. Do consider a viewing of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Ugh, that movie will definitely help you diffuse stress and absolutely bring more fun into your world. It was a joy talking to you today about your brain's quest for certainty. Thanks for listening. If you're enjoying what you're learning, I'd love to have you as a member of the Less Stress, More Fun community on Facebook. Join me there to continue the conversation from the podcast. Plus, you'll get access to things I share only with community members. I'll talk to you next week.